Welcome to the Bedside Clinical Skills Student Orientation. I am Alif Yusube. I'm the content lead for this course. First, I want to start by declaring that I have no conflicts of interest. This course is the first and only opportunity you have to practice bedside clinical skills on real hospitalized patients before your clerkships. So what are bedside clinical skills? These are the skills we use every day as physicians. It is obtaining a patient history, performing a physical exam, and then documenting this information into a universally recognized structure. In this course, you will learn this structure and organization for presenting patient information in both the written and oral formats. You will practice interacting with patients in a sensitive and respectful manner, and you will gain experience discussing cases and receiving faculty feedback. So this course has several objectives. By the end of the year, you will be able to perform a full history on a hospitalized patient. You will be able to conduct a full adult physical exam. You'll be able to document a history and physical on a hospitalized patient with particular attention to the appropriate organization of this material. You'll be able to differentiate between subjective and objective findings. You will learn that subjective information will go in the history sections, whereas objective information will be documented in the physical exam section of the HNP. You'll be able to identify and appropriately rank patient problems into a problem list. You will be able to develop a differential diagnosis and discuss this within your assessment. You will formulate a plan, and this will be appropriate to your level of learning. And lastly, you'll be able to deliver a concise and well-organized five-minute presentation. This course is designed in a small group format. This allows the opportunity for group discussion, peer feedback, and bedside rounds to show interesting and abnormal physical exam findings. Each student will attend four small group sessions two sessions in the fall, and two sessions in the spring. Students requiring remediation may be expected to attend additional sessions. Each session runs about three to four hours long, depending on the amount of discussion. Before your first BCS session, please review all the following materials. You can find all of these in Entrada. So what happens during each BCS session? So first, you're going to meet your preceptor at the designated location. If you're assigned to the general medical floor, please meet your preceptor at Oban Pan. If you're assigned to the emergency department, you will meet your preceptor in the designated conference room. You can find these assignments on Entrada. Next, your preceptor will assign patients. You're going to have about 5 to 10 minutes to review your patient's history and medication list in EPIC. You are only going to use EPIC to review their past medical history, their surgical history, and their medications. Do not look up their family history, social history, or allergies. Next, your preceptor will introduce you to your patient and familiarize you with the room. All right, Derek, let's meet your patient. Okay. Hello. Mr. Tran, can we come in? Hi, sir. So I turned on your TV real quick. Okay. Mr. Tran, this is Derek. He's our second year medical student. He's me talking to you today. I'm just going to show him around the room really quickly. So I pushed mute on this TV. It's also the patient's call light. If the patient or you needs anything, you're able to push this big red button to call the nurse. Okay, so you can see right now he's on the monitor. This blue wave is the patient's pulse ox. This blue number underneath is his pulse, his heart rate. He's not on the monitor right now. It's picking up the pulse ox and the heart rate. And then this number in purple is his blood pressure. To operate the electronic blood pressure cuff, you'll see a start button. All you need to do is hit that button start, and it'll start taking his blood pressure. Okay? And then back here you have a machine to take his temperature. The probe comes out. There's covers here right behind it. You're going to slip a cover on. It's going to go underneath his tongue, and then you'll see the machine. It'll start kind of spinning to give you a number. It'll beep. That's the temperature, and then you just push this button to discard the top. 
If you need a otoscope, we have that, a thelmoscope, and then let me show you where the covers are. Two, two, four, four. It's gonna hear, you're gonna hear a little click. You're gonna unclick the button here. Squeeze these two together to open the door. And then you're gonna pull this top open. In the top, you'll find otoscope covers. If you need tongue depressor, we'll be in here too, okay? So to bring the patient's rails down, you're gonna click this yellow lever up and the rail goes down. To bring it back up, all you need to do is push it up. Okay. So down, and then if you want to lay the patient down, yellow lever up, and then it's going to release the top of the bed and you can lay the patient down. Same with if you want to bring him back up, pull it up again, bring him back up. Okay? Students will then have 60 minutes to perform their history and physical. Begin the encounter by reintroducing yourself and your level of training. Reiterate to them that you are not part of the care team and that this is solely an educational experience. Sit down next to your patient at their eye level and remember to always explain what you are doing. Hello, Mr. Tran. My name is Derek. I'm a second year medical student here at Rush. Thank you very much for agreeing to help me learn how to take a patient history and do physical exam. I just want to remind you that even though I'm going to be asking you a bunch of questions today, I'm not actually a part of your patient care team. If you have any questions about your patient care, though, I am more than happy to help find someone who can assist you. Do you mind if I take a seat? Sure. All right, now before we begin, I'd like to quickly go over a little bit of exactly what we're going to be doing today. First, I'm going to be asking you why you're here, and then I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions about your past medical history. And then we'll move on to sort of a physical exam portion. Um, I just want to let you know that everything you tell me today is completely confidential, so there's no need to worry about that. Um, but if you ever have any questions throughout, just let me know. Do you have any questions now? No. Start obtaining your patient's history using open-ended questions. Follow up using directed clarifying questions. Sometimes patients will have more than one chief complaint. If they do, you must perform an HPI on each chief complaint. Okay then, let's get started Mr. Tram. So what brought you to the hospital today? Well, my right arm's been hurting for three days. Okay, can you describe the pain a little bit? What type of pain are you having? It's burning. Okay. For past medical and surgical histories, you will be reviewing with the patient the information you found in EPIC. If the patient does not know their history, ask them if they brought a list. If there are family members or friends in the room, ask the patient if you can ask them for this information. And lastly, if they don't know all or parts of their history, please document this. Now I want to review a little bit more about your past medical history, if that's all right. I see here you have a history of diabetes that was diagnosed in 2014, congestive heart failure that was diagnosed in 2009, and you've had a high blood pressure, hypertension since 2002. Is this correct? Yes. Okay. And you have had surgery in the past. Um, I see here you had an appendectomy in 1988. Is that correct? Anything else? Um, I did have a recent mole removed two weeks ago from my arm. Okay. Same goes for medications. Again, you're going to review the information you found in EPIC with the patient. You will need the name of the medication, the dose, the route, and the regimen. If they don't know, ask them if they brought their medications or a list. You can also, again, ask other people in the room, such as family or friends. Again, if they don't know all or parts of their medication list, please document it. All right, Mr. Tran, now I'd like to review some of your medications with you. Um, I have here that you're taking a couple different medications. Are you still taking metformin, 500 milligrams twice a day, Lasix, 20 milligrams twice a day, lisinopril, 20 milligrams once a day, and metoprolol, XL, 100 milligrams once a day? Um, well, let me check. <clears throat> All that's correct, except my Lasix was recently increased to 40. Okay. And who did that for you? Uh, my primary care doctor. When obtaining a social history, remember that you'll be asking sensitive questions. Begin by reminding the patient that everything that they tell you is confidential. If there are friends or family in the room, please ask them to step out before asking any social questions. 
Okay, Mr. Tran. Um, now I'm going to ask you a couple more sensitive questions. I don't want you to be alarmed. These are questions we ask everybody, but I just want to warn you in advance, okay? Um, again, everything that you tell me is completely confidential. Um, so my first question to you is, do you use any tobacco products? When asking the review of systems, remember that this is actually a review of the patient's recent symptoms, not diagnoses. Do not ask every single symptom for each organ system. Pick three or four symptoms per organ system based on your patient's chief complaint. It's okay to ask more symptoms in the organ system related to the patient's chief complaint. Begin by explaining to the patient that you'll be asking them a lot of different questions regarding recent symptoms. Ask them to tell you if they've experienced any of these symptoms recently with a simple yes or no. Here's an example of a correct review of systems. Okay, Mr. Tran, um, now I'm going to ask you a lot of questions really quickly. It's something we call the review of systems. Um, so I want you to respond yes or no when I ask you all these questions, if you've had any of these symptoms in the past three months, okay? Um, so my first series of questions, have you had any cough, wheezing, or shortness of breath? Now let's move on to the exam. Start by washing your hands. Next, get a full set of vital signs. Before each part of the exam, explain to the patient what you will be doing before performing the action. Um, I'd like to move on to a physical exam at this point, so the first thing I'm going to do is wash my hands, okay? okay. So the first thing I'd like to do, Mr. Tran, is take your vital signs. So let's start with your blood pressure, okay? Okay. I just need to borrow your left arm again, okay? And I'll place this blood pressure cuff on you. How's that? Is that comfortable? Yes. Okay. And then let me just start it here. Do pertinent exams first. If the patient's chief complaint is abdominal pain, do the abdominal exam first. Many parts of the exam are performed on bare skin. Always warn the patient before uncovering them. If you need a patient to move, explain to them that they need to move for part of the exam and why. It may be difficult for a patient to move on their own. If you need assistance, please look for a nurse or other staff member. And if you can't find one, please call your preceptor. Okay, Mr. Tran, for this next part of the physical exam, I need to listen to the back of your lungs. Now, I know you're in pain, and it might be a little bit hard, but this is the most accurate way to perform a lung exam. It'll be very quick, and then as soon as I'm done, I'll help you get comfortable again, okay? Okay. All right, so I'll grab my stethoscope, and then I'll have you sit up a little bit, okay? And then just take deep breaths. When performing the abdominal exam, remember to cover the patient with a sheet before lifting their gown. Also remember the order in which the abdominal exam is performed. First you look, then you listen, and lastly you feel. This exam should also be documented in this way. If you find tenderness on the patient's abdominal exam, remember to determine whether or not there is guarding and rebound. All right, Mr. Tran, the next thing I'd like to do is an abdominal exam. For this part of the exam, I'm going to have to lay you back in the bed so that you're lying flat. And But don't worry, I'm going to keep you covered with the sheet um, while I expose your abdomen so I can take a look at it, okay? Okay. All right, so the first thing I'll do is take the sheet and make sure we keep you covered. There's half of it. And the other half. And now I'm going to lean the back of the bed down, okay? Still comfortable? Yeah. Okay, if you could pull up your gown for me while I keep you covered with the sheet. All right, thank you very much. Do you mind if I move your some of your pants here out of the way? There we go. Now the first thing I'm doing is just taking a look at your abdomen. I'm inspecting it to make sure that everything looks all right, and it does to me. So the next thing I'm going to do um, is auscultate or listen with my stethoscope again, okay?
and everything sounds healthy and normal as well. All right, for this next part of the exam, I'm going to actually press on different parts of your belly, those same spots I listen to with my stethoscope. You let me know if you have any pain, okay? I'm going to start up here on the right. Any pain there? Yeah. What about if I move over to this side? Any pain there? Yeah. How about Ouch. here? Ouch. I'm sorry, I'm very sorry. So that hurt you when I pressed in that left slower side there? Yeah. I'm going to do one more thing, and I know it's painful, but I'd like you to let me know if it hurts more when I'm pressing or when I take off the pressure of my hands, okay? okay. And I'll try to be as gentle as possible. I'm sorry. So. So you can tell me, does it hurt more when I'm pressing? Yes. yes. Or when I let go? When you're pressing, yeah. Okay, only when I'm pressing. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll get you covered back up, okay? Do not skip the musculoskeletal or neurologic exam because the patient cannot stand or walk. No part of the physical exam involves the patient standing or walking besides assessment of gait and the Romberg sign. Everything else can be done with the patient laying down. If you need tips on how to do these exams on a supine patient, please call your facilitator. Next thing, Mr. Tran, that I'd like to do is test the strength in your legs, okay? So I'm going to sit you back up, and then we can work on that, okay? I'm going to expose your legs, but I'll keep the rest of you covered, okay? Okay. All right, now the first thing I want you to do is, flex, is lift your leg up off the bed, okay, to me. As much as you can. There you go. Keep it up. Keep it up. Same thing with the other leg there, okay? Lift it straight up off the bed. Excellent. The next thing I'm going to do is bend your leg, and I want you to kick out against me, okay? Just like that. And now pull me towards you, and we'll do the same thing with the other leg, okay? I want you to kick out against me, and pull me towards you. Okay. And the next thing I'm going to do is test the, the strength of your ankles, okay? I want you to point your toes up towards your head, just like that. Keep them pointed. Thank you. And now push both your feet down. Excellent. Okay, Mr. Tran, the next thing I'd like to do is check some of the reflexes in your legs, okay? Okay. All right, so all you need to do is relax, all right? I'm really tired. Can I lie down for this? Of course. Make sure to keep you covered as well, okay? Still comfortable? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to continue checking your reflexes, okay? Um, so I checked your right, so I'll check your left leg now, okay? I'm just going to have you roll your leg and sort of bend it that way. Keep everything relaxed, all right? And do the same thing with your Achilles reflexes, or doing the same thing with my hammer on the back of your leg, okay? So I just want you to relax. Let me have all of the weight of your leg here. Just a little tap. And the same thing over here, okay? Just relax. Thank you very much. You must uncover and fully examine the part of the body related to the patient's chief complaint. If the patient is hesitant, Please explain to them why you're performing the exam before doing so. If you don't feel comfortable, call your facilitator. If they refuse any part of the exam, document it. All right, Mr. Tran, the next thing I'd like to do is actually take a look at that wound on your right arm, okay? I'll start by just unwrapping it, and then I'll take a look at it. My arm really hurts. Can we skip this part? I know it's painful, uh, Mr. Tran, but it's something that's it's related to your chief complaint, the reason that you came in today. It's something that's actually really important to your physical exam, so I'd really appreciate it if you let me take a look at your arm. Don't worry, I'll go very slowly. I'll be as careful as I can be, okay? It is important that you perform a complete physical exam. If you run out of time, it is acceptable to perform a focused exam, meaning that you would perform the parts of the exam that are pertinent to the patient's chief complaint. Document any reasons for missing parts of the exam. Lastly, end your encounter by thanking your patient for their time and participation. 
All right, Mr. Tran. So that's everything uh, that I need to do today with you. Thank you very much for your time and your participation. I really appreciate you helping me learn how to take a medical history and perform a physical exam. So I hope you feel better soon, okay? Thank you. Now let's review some tips you can use during your BCS sessions. If the patient has any questions or needs something during your encounter, look for their nurse, push the call light in the patient's room, or call your group facilitator. If a consultant, other student, nurse, or doctor comes into the patient's room while you're in there, stay you can gain valuable information from them. If they ask the patient a question you are planning to ask, use the answer the patient gives to them. Try not to repeat the same questions. Same goes for exams. For example, if the surgical resident uncovers the infected leg you are about to examine, this is your time to examine the leg too. Just ask. If you're in the emergency room and your patient leaves for a test, please ask the technician where they are going. Most tests only take 10 to 15 minutes to perform. If they are taken to a stress test, MRI, or procedure, this will last longer than 15 minutes and you'll likely need to end the encounter. If they have a test done in the room, you can stay in the room and watch the test or wait right outside. Many of these tests are again done in 15 minutes. Interruptions of 10 to 15 minutes are acceptable. You can call your preceptor and let them know about the interruption and you will be given more time. On the general medical floor, if your patient leaves for a test, you will likely need to immediately end the encounter. Call your preceptor immediately as well. If your patient ends the encounter for any reason, again, call your preceptor. Remember, your HPI and review of systems are all subjective. They are based on what the patient tells you. Your physical exam, assessment, and plan are all objective. And these are based on what you find and what you think. After each BCS session, submit your written HMPs in Entrada within three days. Prior to your next BCS session, review the grading rubric and faculty comments. These will be available 10 days after each BCS session. So how do you pass BCS? A passing grade is defined as a timely completion of all the required patient encounters. Although you're required to submit four HMPs for the year, a score of at least 70% on the second and fourth HMP of the year are considered a passing grade. Students are evaluated using a 34 point grading rubric. This rubric can be found in detail in the student guide on Entrada. Each task in the grading rubric is scored using a zero or a one. A zero means that the task was unsatisfactory, meaning the behavior was absent or significant improvement is needed. A score of a one means satisfactory completion of the task, meaning that the behavior is present and demonstrated in a well-organized way with little or no improvement needed. I will now review each of the 34 items on which you are graded. You can find the grading rubric in much further detail in the BCS Student Guide on Entrada. Items 1 through 5 evaluate your interaction with the patient. Item 1 determines whether you are prepared for the experience. On this slide, and as well as the BCS Student Guide, you can find a list of the materials you need to bring for each experience. Some of the items you're required to bring are available for checkout in the General Education Resources Office. If you do need to check out items, please make sure you do that before your encounter and return them after each session. Number two, come dressed in professional attire and introduce yourself appropriately. Number three, you will be graded on your interviewing skills. You should elicit the history from the patient starting with open-ended questions and use follow-up directed questions to clarify. Number four, you should always be respectful of the patient and family. You should maintain the patient's modesty and privacy, and you should demonstrate respect for colleagues in the small group discussions. Number five, you should be able to perform the physical exam in a manner that's appropriate for a second year medical student. If you need any help, please don't hesitate to ask your facilitator. 
Items six through nine pertain to your oral presentation. Number six grades the clarity and organization of your oral presentation. So you should be using the correct and a logical order. You should describe the physical exam in a head-to-toe order, and you should be correctly using subjective and objective terminology. Number seven is regarding the use of pertinent information. Your oral presentation should be focused on the information in the history and physical exam that is pertinent to the patient's chief complaint. Number eight, the oral presentation should provide an assessment of the patient's chief complaint. The student will propose a differential diagnosis and explain why they think the various differentials are more or less likely. Depending on your level of training, you will, may need help formulating this differential. During the 15 minutes you have to formulate your oral presentation, you can also use that time to look up various differentials and also use the help of your facilitator. Number nine, you must state a plan with recommendations. Do not simply report the plan the patient tells you the doctors have for him or her already. Please come up with your own plan and reasons to support these recommendations. You must give a diagnostic, therapeutic, patient education, and disposition or follow-up plan for each presentation. The rest of the items on the grading rubric pertain to the written h &P, which you will submit on Entrada. Number 10, the chief complaint is stated clearly. The chief complaint should be in a concise phrase that explains why the patient is seeking medical attention. Number 11, the statement of the source and reliability of the patient. Please document who the source of your history is and any factors that may confound the reliability of this historian. Number 12, your HPI should be logically organized in a narrative form. So begin with an introductory sentence that includes the patient's age, gender, medical history, and their chief complaint, and specify for how long they've had this complaint. The reader should be able to understand the chronology of the patient's presentation. You should also include the presence and absence of symptoms to support and refute possible differential diagnoses. Your HPI should include subjective descriptions. You should use correct medical terminology and avoid including objective data such as exam findings. The HPI should also thoroughly characterize your symptoms. You should use the acronym OPPQRST to describe each chief complaint. Item 15. Your HPI should include pertinent positives and negatives that you've discovered in the past medical history, past surgical history, family history, and social history. It should also include the pertinent positive and negative symptoms you have found in the review of systems. You should also include an informational statement about the patient's understanding of their own illness and the reason why they sought medical attention. Number 16. The past medical and past surgical history should be in a list format and organized either by level of severity or chronologically. Number 17, the family history should include at least all the first degree relatives. All other relatives should be included as well if they have history that's significant to the HPI. 18, include a social history. Your social history must include the alcohol cage questions, tobacco and pack years, as well as drug use. Do not include sexual history if it's not pertinent to the HPI. 19, the medication list should include the name, dose, route, and regimen. Number 20, allergies and allergic reactions should also be in a list format and the type of reaction should also be listed. Number 21 grades the review of systems. Make sure that it is complete and also in a list format from head to toe, organized by organ system. Make sure you first list the positive symptoms before listing the negative symptoms for each organ system. The next three items grade the physical exam. The physical exam should be complete. Note any reasons for deferring or skipping portions of the exam. Number 23, use appropriate objective descriptions. 
try to avoid using the word normal when possible. All normal physical exam findings have an appropriate objective description that is universally used. Number 24. Your physical exam should be organized by organ system and in a list format. Start with the vital signs, followed by the general appearance, and then each organ system listed from head to toe. Number 25 grades the problem list. This should be organized from highest to lowest priority with the patient's chief complaint from this encounter listed as number one. All other problems should also be included on this list. That would include anything that's identified in the review of systems as a positive symptom, all positive physical exam findings, and all active medical problems in the past medical history, surgical history, and social history. Next, I'll discuss the assessment portion of the h &P. It's important to note that students may not have covered the organ system related to their patient's chief complaint. There's no penalty if their differential diagnoses or explanations are incorrect. You'll receive a satisfactory grade if you include all the required components on the grading rubric. It's important also to note that not all problems in the problem list need a full assessment and plan. Develop an assessment using the IDEA method. You can learn more about this method in the subsequent slides, as well as in the BCS student guide. Interpretive summary. Give an interpretive summary which references history and physical exam findings that are pertinent to the differential diagnosis being considered. Number 27. Propose and define a differential diagnosis. Number 28 will explain which differential is most likely and why. Number 29 lists the alternative diagnoses. The student should propose and define alternative diagnoses and explain why these are most to least likely. Number 30, the assessment session should include all active patient medical problems in the same order as they were indicated on the problem list. Please include only a brief assessment for each problem. Only the patient's chief complaint needs an assessment using the IDEA method. Moving on to the plan section of the history and physical. Again, it's important to note that students will not be penalized for incorrect plans. As long as they offer an explanation for recommending each plan and do not simply reiterate the plan that the patient told them, they will receive full credit. Number 31 grades the diagnostic plan. Propose how you would clarify the diagnosis. Give a list of further tests and explain why these would help confirm or exclude differential diagnoses that you are considering. Number 32 provides a therapeutic plan. Make sure you propose a treatment plan and explain why you recommended this treatment option. Number 33, identify an appropriate education plan based on your patient's needs. Number 34, propose a follow-up or disposition plan. If a patient is to be discharged, when and where should they follow up? What are some of the barriers you can foresee to this patient's discharge? If you plan for the patient to be admitted, where should they be admitted and why? Now let's troubleshoot some issues you may encounter during your BCS sessions. In rare instances, you may be asked to partner up if there are not enough patients for each student to have their own patient. If you are partnered up, please only submit an individualized history and physical. Do not work on your write-ups together. Patient dropout. There are many reasons why a patient encounter may end. The patient may choose to terminate the encounter. They may go off to a test. There may be a long patient interruption or a patient could have a mental status or acuity change. Depending on how much of your h &P you've completed, you may still be able to formulate an assessment and plan. If not enough information was obtained, your facilitator will have to find you another patient. Please start where you left off with the first patient. As this is your first encounter with hospitalized patients, it's important to always check the signage outside of patients' rooms for contact precautions. Make sure you always follow these as well as universal precautions. 
In the rare instance that you have an exposure to bodily fluids or infectious agents, it's extremely important that you stop the patient interview immediately. If there is exposure to bodily fluid, make sure you wash the site with soap and water. Contact your facilitator as soon as possible. I want to give a special thanks to the people that helped me with this video. That would be Rahul Patwari, Derek Norton, and Patrick Tran. Thank you so much. Lastly, I want to remind you to have fun. I know that your first encounters with hospitalized patients can be stressful and that receiving feedback in front of your peers can be daunting. Many of us as physicians look forward to our patient encounters. It's something that we find great joy in and hopefully as educators, we can help you with this experience and make it more enjoyable for you and prepare you for the future. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask.